Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I want to talk about some studies that stood out to me that came out this year. Every day I get a bunch of studies sent to my email automatically as they are published or as they are uh, put up on PubMed based on a bunch of different keywords. But these ones stood out to me. Some are not, you know, so impressive, but just the fact that they were done makes me really excited. So I want to just kind of tell you about them. And they are all relevant to penile health, Peyronie's, and a ketogenic diet, okay? Um, so, okay, the first study is ketogenic diet and pulmonary fibrosis. So it is a study on rats. And of course, rats don't respond to keto as well as humans. So um, I think this is even more impressive and even really cool that it worked so well because um, it showed, you know, all these markers of fibrosis to be way, uh, you know, significantly reduced collagen deposition was significantly reduced, TGF beta, all these things. Please, you know, check out the study because there's a bunch of different markers it looked at and it showed that keto significantly helped lung fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis in these rats. And the reason why I like this study so much is that we don't have any study, at least not that I know of, that has the word ketogenic diet plus some model of fibrosis, a specific model of fibrosis. So I think that's really, really exciting. Obviously, there are studies on insulin and how insulin actually does contribute to fibrosis, but not on a ketogenic diet. So although it's kind of obvious to me that keto can help fibrosis, um, I think just the fact that this study exists is very, very cool. So check that out. Um, the next study is on a ketogenic diet and uh, lower urinary symptoms and um, testicular function in obese men. So these men were on keto for quite a while and it showed these guys, uh, you know, their testosterone went up, their vitamin D status went up, and also their PSA went significantly down. So the study, um, you know, I think it's, it's exciting mostly because of what it looked at and kind of how the study is phrased. It kind of mentions how having an enlarged prostate is actually a symptom of having too much uh, insulin in the body, really, you know, insulin resistance. And keto is effective at rapidly um, getting rid of that problem and making your prostate, um, you know, uh, getting rid of your kind of urinary symptoms. And for me, you know, I've had prostate issues since I was like 16 or something. I used to pee so many times. Uh, you know, I remember when I got really, um, when I really noticed my insulin resistance, I was peeing like 10 times a night. It was terrible. But in high school, I remember um, always having like kind of a swollen prostate. After sex, my prostate would ache, my penis would bend. And there are, you know, there are threads on the Peyronie's forum where me and a bunch of other guys talk about, you know, maybe the, maybe the prostate is somehow related to Peyronie's. And a lot of guys who get prostate surgery end up having Peyronie's. Of course, the mechanism there could be different. But I think, um, I think, you know, it's all kind of related. And I think, again, it comes down to insulin. So uh, I think this is really important. And since I went on a ketogenic diet, guys, I have not, you know, been peeing so many times. I also don't have that aching in my prostate. And it's really changed things for me. It really has, you know, it's um, and fasting as well. But uh, I still, uh, yeah, I love this study. I think it's really, really cool. So, so check that out. The next study is even cooler. And if you're in the keto community, uh, you will probably know about this one. But it, it was a, <clears throat> um, a study, you know, just a couple months ago. And these other studies were all just in the last few months, by the way. But this study was on a ketogenic diet for 18 months. And it looked at the size of um, men's arteries. So the thickness of your arteries in your neck is a very you know, important marker for, you know, you know how much, uh, you know, heart disease you uh, have or how likely you are to get a stroke, I believe, or um, even heart attack, probably. I'm not, I'm not so, I'm not such an expert on, um, you know, diagnostics for heart disease, but um, that's a very important kind of marker, right? How thick it is. You don't want it to be uh, blocked and overly thick, right? So if it's too thick, then it means that it's blocked. Uh, now, this study showed that men had a significant reduction in the thickness of their arteries, which is so cool on a ketogenic diet. Now, you know, we, you know, in the keto community have, you know, suspected that this is the case that your arteries will be healthier on keto it's obvious why because fat is not what causes heart disease fat does not clog your arteries unless you're talking about certain types of fat 
from um, certain types of vegetable oils, right? But uh, in general, we know what causes heart disease is insulin, is glucose, okay? And what clogs your arteries is not fat, it is actually glucose. And then if you combine glucose consumption with fat, then you're even uh, in more trouble because the fats you're consuming are getting um, damaged, basically, and then getting uh, sticking into those inflamed <clears throat> blood vessels and arteries. So this study is awesome. I love to see, you know, I just love to see that studies are being made like this now. And uh, please check that out as well. I will link all these studies in the description of the video. Um, now, let's see. The last uh, few studies are just on uh, the region, some, the, the region in the U.S. and uh, also in Turkey on, uh, you know, what type of people tend to have Peyronie's or where they live. Um, at least the one in the U.S. looked at where do people in the U.S. tend to have the most Peyronie's. And what it found, surprise, surprise, is that people in the South have the most cases of Peyronie's disease. Now, people in the South have the highest rates of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, which is all metabolic anyway. So this should not be a surprise to us. Uh, but still, I, I like that we have studies that are looking at this. So that's cool. Now, the other study came out just last week. I posted it on the forum. This was looking at Turkey, a population-based study looking at people with Peyronie's in Turkey, what other health problems did they have? And it found that besides things like smoking or old age, which we don't, which kind of is obvious, it found that what was most correlated with Peyronie's is heart disease, hypertension, and, and diabetes. That's very obvious. And heart disease and hypertension, high blood pressure, those are metabolic issues. So it's it basically just found that metabolic issues are related to Peyronie's or tend to be correlated with Peyronie's, okay? And that is, um, um, you know, that's that makes perfect sense, um, but it's cool, again, to see studies like this. And uh, I forgot one study already, but this is another one. Um, it's kind of different, but I think it's kind of cool. Uh, the la This is the last study, okay, that I'm going to mention in this video, but this study looked at... Uh, it looked at different diets and erection function, erectile function. It looked at keto, vegan, you know, a bunch of different diets and intermittent fasting. And it found that men who did an organic diet and who did intermittent fasting tended to have the best erectile function. Now, a kind of epidemiological study like this doesn't mean much, okay? Um, it's, you know, men who can afford an organic diet, um, they tend to be extremely healthy anyway. Uh, men who can, you know, men who do intermittent fasting tend to be very healthy anyway, exercise, do all these things. So I, I think this really means nothing, but I do want to mention this study because, again, uh, I've never seen a study with a title like this. I've never seen fasting and erectile function together, and I think we need studies like this. And it's very cool that it showed that fasting was associated with better erectile function. And, um, you know, we know that fasting increases your... Um, erection, uh, sorry, your uh, nitric oxide levels, it lowers inflammation, you know, it, uh, we have every reason to, to think that fasting helps your, your penis health, okay, uh, in my case, fasting restored the sensitivity to my penis, even after three years of keto, and I fast about 42 hours every week, and that always seems to help my erections, it makes my penis get harder much quicker, much more easily, um, and yeah, I really hope we see more studies like this in the future. So yeah, these are the studies I thought were the coolest that came out this year, all pretty much within the last four months. And please take a look at them in the description of the video. But, um, you know, I think as the years go by, I think we're going to see more studies on fasting and keto and penis health. I think that's obvious, um, which reminds me, you know, more and more studies are coming out on fasting and keto and PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is somewhat similar to Peyronie's in that we're dealing with smooth muscle cells and fibroids, which is a TGF beta kind of driven fibrotic process. And it is very related to insulin resistance. So, um, you know, it's really interesting because you, if you look on PubMed and do a search for PCOS keto or PCOS diet, you will see many studies on diet and PCOS. And it clearly demonstrates that it's very effective at getting rid of these fibroids and kind of helping women with PCOS, but uh, Peyronie's doesn't have such studies. And, you know, I, I think the reason why is kind of obvious. Um, I, but uh, I don't want to get into that 
um, in this video. I, I, I mean, I think, just to make it clear, I think it's probably because Peyronie's doesn't really uh, interfere with one's ability to have children. I think PCOS um, actually interferes with your ability to um, become pregnant as a woman. I'm not sure about that. I will make another video on PCOS and Peyronie's and kind of how they're similar in the future and how they're different. But um, I still, um, yeah, I'm excited to see lots more studies like this on diet, on keto. And I will say that, you know, never, you know, I'm not, I'm not stating that keto is going to cure your Peyronie's or fasting will cure your Peyronie's. I'm never going to say that. But I will say that it's like, it's like if you have heart disease, it's like, you know, is diet going to cure you of heart disease? Well, maybe in many, many years, you know, combined with many things, who knows, right? Um, and Peyronie's is even, you know, is very difficult because we have healthy cells in the penis being replaced by um, collagen or actual, uh, you know, um, fibrous plaque. So, you know, I I'm not trying to suggest that you can just magically cure all of your symptoms with keto or fasting. But I do think that the evidence is very clear that uh, it's, you know, keto is important for penile health, as well as fasting, um, you know, regardless of if it really seems to help you or not. And yeah, it's something we, we're going to, I'll keep talking about on this channel. And, um, you know, please be very careful if you choose to fast or start keto and make sure you do other things for yourself too. Um, you know, somebody on the forum just did a like 27 day fast. Uh, I don't know if it was that long, but that sounded extremely um, difficult and hard on his body. Um, you know, congratulations if you're watching this. Um, congratulations for doing such a long fast, but man, that sounded brutal. And I don't think that's going to necessarily cure your Peyronie's. In fact, I think the, uh, the best diet for Peyronie's would probably be something like alternate day fasting or keto, where you're making sure to rebuild and give your body um, the opportunity to kind of heal. Uh, you know, studies on rats and wound healing have shown that rats have worse wound healing who fast too long. And there's kind of a sweet spot where if you feed the rats every other day, then, you know, or uh, like two days after you inflict a wound on them, then they will heal faster um, as opposed to if they just kept on eating. Okay, so it's, it's kind of complicated. And I think the reason why keto and fasting is good for Peyronie's is not because of autophagy. I know that's very tempting to think like, okay, maybe my body will eat all the scar tissue through autophagy. That may be true. You know, I've heard um, from Rhonda Patrick that scar tissue actually releases proline and some maybe some other things, you know, during fasting. Um, but I think the, the real reason that fasting is, is good for Peyronie's and keto is due to the, just to insulin, to inflammation and to how that affects fibrosis. Okay. So um, just be careful and make sure you are doing many things for Peyronie's and penile health, not just diet. But that's it, guys. Um, I know I kind of flew through these studies, but I think they're awesome. And I will be making more videos like this in the future where I just kind of go over some stuff that I've been thinking about or um, compiled. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you very, very soon.